culture, we love their history. Only by language, yet one people. No for religion, yet one people. Sometimes we cuss, cuss, also we fuss, fuss. This is my Ghana, one lovely nation. This is my Ghana, one lovely people. This is my Ghana, one free people. This is my Ghana, one happy people. Big up the man, Uncle Man. Me lick a shot to the man, Dinga Seize. Do you remember Paul Kofi? And the Queen, yes, and to a, to a. a boss of blank, from the Rajak Bar. I know be a woman, a Queen Nani. This is my gold coast, now call Ghana. Get way to Africa, get way to the world. My dear Ghana, sweet, sweet Ghana. Set it free, free from the vulture. Ghana, Ghana, Kwame Kuma Ghana. Ghana, Ghana. Yes, 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 yes. Fellow students, how are you doing? You good? Everybody good? Are you all going to pass your exams? All of you? Who is going to fail the exam? Who is going to pass the exam? If you know you're going to pass the exam, say, Moo of fire! Moo of fire! Fire, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. So as you were told, as you were told, my name is Black Buster. I am a musician and I'm also a radio broadcaster. So I am on radio. Once in a while you see me on TV with my music and all that. In fact, I didn't go to school to study music. I studied land economy at the University of Science and Technology. And when I finished, I went to the University of Coventry in London to study for my master's degree in oil and gas. So you are seeing a Rasta man in front of you. At the same time, you are seeing an academician, a musician, and a patriot. Somebody who loves his country. Today I'm going to make it brief so that we don't spend too much time. Some of you might have heard about me. Some too, nothing at all. It's okay. If you don't know me, no problem. If you know me, no problem. But, again, my name is Black Rasta. I am a musician. I'm sure some of you would have heard a popular song that I made. I was not even sure that it was going to be a very popular song. But with time, it became very, very popular. Some of you were probably so young at the time. Some of you five years. Some of you, six years, seven years. The song came out in 2007. November 2007. And it became very, very popular. Mama, Mama, come back with taco, come back with taco, Papa, 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 sing, come back with taco. Come and put a cover of Barack Obama. Barack, 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 Oh, yes. Some of you are also going to be musicians. Some of you will become musicians. So whatever you're doing, open your ears and your minds. Be attentive and God the Almighty. Whether you call him Allah 
or you call him God, he will make sure that everything is everything. Today I came to share a very simple message with you. It's a message of patriotism. It's a message for you to love your country. A lot of us are suffering today because we don't love our country. A lot of us here, if a plane comes to land here, Damungu Senior High School, those who want to go to America, join that plane. I'm sure all of you here, including some of your masters, including the cockroaches and the lizards and the mosquitoes in this hall, they will all join and fly to America. It is not bad to travel, but wherever you go, remember your home. There was an old song in the days when I was growing up as a little boy. It was done by Evie Edna Ogoli. And she said, When I go south, west, east, and north, I will always come back home. Home, sweet home. When I go north, I will always come back home. You remember that song? Today, that is why I'm here. In 2009, the President of America, Barack Obama, came to Ghana. And he came to Ghana because of the song that I made. Whether they like it or not, Barack Obama won the elections in America and decided that he would come into this country, the very first country he was visiting since he became president. There must have been a reason. And the reason was that Black Rasta had made a beautiful song for him. But there were some politicians who were not ready to allow me at all to meet with Barack Obama. Some of them said, oh, this guy, he will go and talk bad about the country. This guy, he will go and mention some names of people who are not doing well. You know? So they didn't want me to meet Obama. But long story cut short, Barack Obama arrived in Ghana and people were rushing, coming to see him, take photographs. He turned to the then president, John Evans Hatamez, and said, where is the gentleman who made the music for me at the end? And Atamils was standing around. He was asking his people. They had to call me by force to come and meet with Barack Obama. They did not want me to meet Obama. Meanwhile, Obama was coming down because of me. Something that is for you can never not be for you. Do you believe that? Yes. Oh my God. So Barack Obama came. I met with the American president. Those of you who use phones when you finish school, go and check it out. You see my photograph with Barack Obama with his hands all over me like that. We had dinner together. We had fun. And the people, the politicians of Ghana, who were trying to prevent me from meeting with Barack Obama, they couldn't get the chance to even take a photograph of me. And I, every second, photographs all over the place from CNN, BBC, and DW, that's Dutch Bella. I became the most important person in Ghana at the time. Whatever you are doing, please take it serious. You don't know what is going to save you in the future. Some of you are so brilliant. Others are not very brilliant. You will be shocked that those who are not very brilliant, they will be the bosses of those who are very brilliant. You will be shocked that some of you, you are not even brilliant at all. You don't know anything. 
and one or two people here are helping you in examinations A, B, C, and you are writing. Some of them even teach you, they write for you. You will be shocked that those writing for you in the examination, you will be their boss in the future. Listen. Try and be very good friends. Don't see each other, especially the ladies. I don't want to call you girls. Soon you're going to be called ladies. Yeah? Oh, this one, I don't like her. She talks too much. That one, walking with the boy that I like. Me, I don't want to talk to her. Flimsy reasons. Some of you, in some of the schools I went to, some of you, little, little girls, you are dating teachers. Some of you. You see a very little girl. And when they tell you that this is the teacher that is doing things with this little tiny dot, you want to look in the sky and say, Hallelujah. 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 It's not time for that. Take your time. Take your time. Some of you also bleach. Because you learnt it from your mothers. Some of you say some small people here that you bleach the whole face. Some of you bleach your chest. Some of you bleach everything. Why are you bleaching? So that what? You will be a white woman. So that you will be more beautiful. Because black is not beautiful. Oh my God. Today I told you I was going to keep the message very short. Listen to this. Black is very beautiful. When I met with Barack Obama, he was so happy. He said, Black Rasta, your song helped me so much. It pushed me on to become president of America. I want to do something for you. And I said, Your Excellency, I am all ears. He said, I wanted to be an American citizen. You know how Americans speak. I wanted to be an American citizen. I wanted to go all the way to America. And blah, blah, blah. I couldn't understand anything. You know how Americans speak. That's how they speak. I said, Your Excellency, could you slow down for me? He said, Okay. I served that army and I understood everything. He wanted me to be an American citizen. And if I became an American citizen, I would go to America any day and have the rights of all Americans. If Americans go to hospital for free, Black Rasta will go to hospital for free. If Americans eat for free, Black Rasta will eat food for free. If Americans eat pizza every Saturday, Black Rasta will eat pizza on Saturday. So I look at Barack Obama and I look up. When I look up, I saw the face of Ndeula Japa. What? Ndeula Japa. I looked here, I saw the face of Kwame Nkrumah. I turned around, I saw the face of Ya Asantoa. I looked over here and I saw another face. And that face frightened me so much that I turned around and told Barack, Mr. President, with all respect, I don't want to be an American citizen. He said, what? You sure? You know how Americans speak? You sure? Repeat after me. You sure? You sure? That was what I said. And he was shocked. He said, okay, we'll talk later. 
I said, yes. Why did I not accept to be an American citizen? Because when I saw the face of Ndeura Japa, I asked him, Ndeura Japa, what is your citizenship? And he said, the land that you are standing on, that is where I belong. Kwame Nkrumah, the same question, that is the same land. Ya Asantua, the same land. Are we not proud of these people? There's a school named Ndeura Japa. Japa Bi Japa. Right? The master of the spear. When they ask us, some of our heroes that made us proud, we would mention in the world of Japan. Yes. We would mention the great in the world of Japan, Kwame Nkrumah, and all those people. We want you to to make us proud. I don't want you to be an American. And then you go there and build an aeroplane. So, an American built an aeroplane. No, a Ghanaian built an aeroplane. Some of you are going to be inventors. Be proud of your country. Be very proud. You hear things like, oh, as for Ghana, dear. Ghana, dear. The, the problems are too much. Everywhere is bad. Everywhere is bad. But other people to their country, everywhere was bad. Until they fixed it. You are those who are going to fix it. Some of us, we are already growing old. On September 2nd, I will be 50. 50. I have, I'm just still looking like this. Because I'm taking good care of myself. Hey, I want you to take a very good care of yourselves. If you continue to sleep around, bleach your beautiful faces and make them something else. If you start inserting things inside you so that you'll be tighter. If you start behaving as if you were porn stars, you will not reach them. A lot of my mates died. There was a time I refused to pick phone calls. Every phone call that came. Oh, do you remember Rahman? The boy who used to sit at the back there uh, when we were in school. He died. Oh, do you remember Adiza? Adiza. Uh, oh, that pretty girl. She died. I didn't like to hear that. Yeah. It was what it was. Please, love your nation. The Americans love their nation. That is where America is where it is right now. I want you to be good citizens. You can go to America. You can go to England and work. But when you work, think about Ghana. Forget about which politician is stealing. Forget about which party is in power. That's not why you are Ghanaian. I'm going to end in the next five minutes. Remember the key things I told you. Love Ghana. Please, when you travel, Make money and come home and build something and employ some other people. There are some wicked Ghanaians, but it's not every Ghanaian who is wicked. How many of you are from the Upper West region? Why? Okay. There's a hotel there called something, something Dubai. You know it? You know that hotel? Such a beautiful hotel in the northern region. Are you not proud? The guy went out to work very hard. Listen to this. Hard! Hard! And brought home money. And said, a lot of my people are unemployed. He built the hotel. He even built a zoo. So that instead of going to Accra to see the lion, now when you go to Dubai, you will see, you will see Upper West Region, Dubai. And he put his friends in charge. Oh, when we were in school, there was a time I was hungry. This guy gave me Gary. You come and be the human resource manager. Oh, yeah, yeah. Abdul Razak, you two, when we were in school, you brought your ball, your fresh ball, and we played. Come, be the manager of the hotel. You know what happened? 
the human resource manager. Now that he had power, he became a porn star. He became a porn star. All the young girls coming to the hotel to look for jobs. You know him now? Yes. I don't want to see your certificate. Certificate is not important. Your breasts are bigger than certificates. Tell me back. This is better than a certificate. Somebody has gone out to work in the snow. Have you seen snow before? Do you know how cold snow is? He worked in the snow, brought home money to be able to alleviate your poverty. You are using that position to sleep with young, young, young girls. Who oh, this man, your sister, class. I don't know if your waist is even still strong. Any young girl who came in, I'll give you the employment, but. Ha! Okay, so you are head of. You too. Say, I came here to look for a job, sir. I finished SHS and I went to, you know, when good girls are speaking, you know, my name. Okay, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Don't call me, sir. My name is. You too, in the night. Bye. You too, you are the manager. Of... He loaded the place with young girls. On Monday, he had a different group of girls that he entertained himself with. Tuesday, different set. Wednesday, different set. Thursday, different set. And the hotel started declining. So one day, the owner of the hotel came in. Ah, what is happening? He looked here, ladies. Looked here, ladies. Ah, the hotel is only ladies who are employed here. Oh, well, that is good. Empowerment, women empowerment. He was mistaken. It was bedroom empowerment. He realized the whole hotel was dirty. He said, oh, ladies, we know you to be so neat. Why is the hotel so dirty? Then he realized, whilst he was talking to some of the ladies, there were two ladies in one room fighting, beating each other. You are a fool. You two are a fool. You are a goat. You two are a sheep. You, 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 she, he, who, he, like that. And the man said, what is happening? The two girls were fighting over the human resource manager. Me, I was here before you. Is it because he slept with you? Me too. So the manager of the hotel said, my friend, you have disappointed me. Go. Go with all your concubines. He sat all the ladies and left one. Oh, if only he knew, he would have sat that one too. The one girl was the receptionist. You know where a receptionist is, right? And he had sympathy for the girl. Because the girl was a national service person from a poor background. No money, nothing. Where do you come from? Ah. If I sack this girl, so you stay, but be careful. Not knowing she was also one of them. You know what they did? Long story cut short. It was that girl who showed the human resource manager the master key to the man's special bedroom. And the guy went in there at night, opened the door, choo -choo. more than 50 times and killed him. It's in the news. The girlfriend and the man killed the man for saying that you have destroyed my hotel. Please go home and sit for some time. Ghanaians, excuse my language, are so good with that. When we get the job, we are happy. But when we go, we steal from the job. Some of you, 
you have collapsed the school library. You go and steal books from there. It is stealing. Some of you, you steal school property. I don't know what you steal, but if you start stealing now, you will be like that hotel human resource manager. Somebody has gone to work hard. You have destroyed the hotel. You'll be shocked that this same person the following day is holding a fire. He's going around looking for another job. My sisters and my brothers, I know that you are finally a student. I'm going to leave you here. If you have any questions to ask me, I will want you to put up your hand. We are going to take five questions and we are done. I have some gifts I brought for you. I'm going to give you those gifts. I will ask you very simple questions. And when you answer, I will give you those gifts. Some of them are wall clocks. Beautiful wall clocks that you can put in your room and remember this day. Some of them too are other things. If you have any question, put up your hand and come up. Anybody? Any question about what we discussed? There's a hand here. Oh, please come. Please put your hands together for the pretty lady here. No, you can stand here. Yes. Thank you. Tell us your name and fire. My name is Abu Salam Hamdi. When we made the statement that we believe what the white people say, and I want to ask you, what can we do to break that down so that we believe what our own people say? Whoa. Put your hands together for him there. Yes. Everything is controlled by the white man. How can you break that? By you rising and becoming patrons and refusing all those things. It's very true. In America, there was a time the bus, you see the bus? White people were supposed to sit in front. Black people would be at the back of the bus. Were you taught that in history? There was something called the Montgomery Bus Boycott. It happened in America. In the days. Black people would sit at the back. And if the back seat was all occupied and more black people came in, they would have to stand, even if the rest of the seats were empty. Those were for white people. That's why some of you, you will hear this. If you are white, you are always right. And if you are black, stay at the back. It took one woman one woman, not a man. One day she got onto the bus and she realized that all the black seats were occupied and she went to sit on the white seat and she crossed her leg. It was called Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks. White people started coming in and then they filled out the place. They wanted her to get up and go and sit at the back. She said, no, there's no seat at the back. I'm going to sit here. The bus driver stopped the bus. You get up! Get out of here! She said, I ain't going nowhere. I said, get out of here! I'm, I'm going nowhere. They forced her held her and threw her out of the bus. Rosa Parks. She came back, sat down, crossed her legs. Because of what they did to Rosa Parks, listen, all the black people in Montgomery boycotted all the buses in America. Do you know, do you understand what that means? All black people said, we 
are not going to use this bus anymore. Revenue started going down because a lot of the laborers were black people. They were those who were boarding the bus. Revenue, money that the bus company was getting started going down. They now, Martin Luther King was part of it. They separated and then they made peace. And from that time, that law that made white people sit in front and black people at the back. Sadly, if white people came in and all the white seats were full and black people were at the back, black people would still have to stand up for white people to go and take their seat even at the back. And things changed. From that time, anybody could sit anywhere. Hey, in America. That's why when America starts saying democracy and we are laugh at America. Look, in America, black people could not vote. As late as the late 1800s. I don't like talking dates. Some of you are frightened. You don't want to mention the history dates. Hey! Black people couldn't vote. They didn't see black people as human beings. Where white people were supposed to go and play, their children, black people were not allowed. And if you went there, you were killed. There was a 14-year-old boy. 14. How many of you here are 14? Nobody. Nobody's 14. You see how young you are? And 14. Now two years old. A younger boy. He saw a white woman. He was called George Steiner. When I paused, I was trying to remember the name. George Steiner. He saw a white lady. He said, ooh, ooh. You're looking good. You're looking sexy. You know what they did to you? For saying the white woman was beautiful and sexy. For the first time in America, they put him in an electric chair. You know what it means to say electric chair? In those days, you will sit in the chair. Ah, I wish this was a class where I could show you pictures. He sat on the chair. In those days, ladies used to have a dryer in my days. These days, I don't see you use that. It's like a basket. They put it around your head. Dryer when you go for your curls. That electric chair thing is like that. They will put it on your head like a hat and click on the electricity. It shocks your brain. You are gone. George Steiner was so small. His head was so small that hat couldn't fit. It was too big for the head. You know what they, they did? They tried to adjust it. They put something on the head first. 14 years old. He didn't kill. He didn't steal. He just told a white woman, you are beautiful. They put it on his head. He was supposed to have died in one minute, 45 seconds at most. He died at seven seconds. They put it there. George Tiny. I read history. Sometimes I get very angry, very sad because of some of these things. She asked a very important question. When South Africans were killing Ghanaians and Nigerians in South Africa, we told you to boycott anything from game. That's their business. If you don't go there and buy, they won't make money. They will think. Boycott all white people's businesses. If white people are fighting you, boycott all Indian people's businesses. If Indian people are fighting you, boycott all uh, brown, yellow, green people who are fighting you. Boycott their businesses. And that is how you can make it. A teacher comes into the class. Look at her face like monkey. Look at, look at her. Look at, look, 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 look. Look, look at her face. Look at her. Go, go. Get out, get, get, get out of my class. Get out, get out, get out. Then he comes to stand here. Look at her. Look at the way she's sitting working. I don't like her face. Such an ugly face. 
Okay, students, you should all stand up and say, Sir, can you explain why you did this to him? If he doesn't give a reason, walk out of the class. But because it didn't happen to you, because it didn't happen to your sister, <laughs> you are laughing. You are happy. You are a fool. You are a fool. You are a fool. Can't you see it? Somebody comes to maltreat one of your own. And you sit back and you are laughing because it's not you. But when it comes to your turn, you want people to sympathize with you. No, that's not what Rosa Parks did. All the black people said, no, sir. And they got what they wanted. Me, I am paid to talk. The more I talk, the more I am paid. If you give me the chance, I will talk the whole day. I will never be tired. But I know you have to write your examination. Any more questions, please? Come. Put your hands together for the pretty lady coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And tell us your name, and then you boss your question. All right. My name is Elena. I want to know from the little name so far, Dr. Take it again. I want to know some of the little name so far, Dr. Oh, okay. Put your hands together. Okay. So Sarah here is asking me, what are some, is she called Sarah? Irada. What was her name? Irada. 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 Okay. What are some of the things that make me proud of Ghana? The great ancestors who fought for me to be able to call Dama Ungo. I hear the correct pronunciation is Dima For me to be proud and say that this is my land. What my ancestors did. When I travel out and I tell them I'm Ghanaian, say, oh, so do you know Nkrumah? I say, sadly, Nkrumah died before I was born. Do you know Abedi Pele? say, yes, I know him. I want you all to make us proud. Don't run away. Stay and make Ghana the America that you want to see. How many of you have been to South Africa? Nobody. Don't worry. Hey! They don't care. Out of 10 South Africans, only one person has a passport. They have snow in South Africa. They have tall buildings in South Africa. So I enjoy South Africa more than London. And their women, so beautiful. You know how South African women look? They are different from the rest of the world. I won't describe them. Look for them and find out how, what they look like. Just like you, you also look different in your own way. Don't try to look like another person. So Ghana has so much history, so much culture. Look at our dances. Look at the ethnic groups. Look at our history. We are a very proud people. We are the gateway to Africa. Even our food. The way we... Hey, Ghanaians are respected so much all over. Next question. Quick, 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 so we close. Please come. Put your hands together for this gentleman. Yeah. Face them and talk to them. Please. My name is Shadrach. Please. Let's think that... Uh, I'm proud of Ghana. We have to have competent and education now. And the government of Ghana or the leaders of Ghana is going to be providing their way. And I've gotten the protocol of going to America. Oh, come and get your way. So, and I have Ghana. I'm proud of Ghana. So, I got to know this. I find this in my own I'm happy to go. Put your hands together for this question. Did you hear the question he asked? He said he's finished school. Old. He loves Ghana. He wants to stay here and work. But everywhere he goes, they don't take him. He goes there, they say, oh, he's full. He goes there, they say he's full. They go there, they say he's full. You can leave. But remember what I told you. When you leave, remember Ghana. 
It means Ghana doesn't have any use for your craft right now. It doesn't mean it won't have use for it later. So leave, do the work, make the money, come home and invest. Don't stay there and die. The sad thing is that a lot of Ghanaians who go there, they write in their will that when they die, they should come and bury them here. So Ghana is now a cemetery. When you are alive, you don't want to be here. But when you are about to die, go to the airport, you see old men and women, they, they can't even, you know, they are all coming to the country to die. No, we don't want dead people in the country. We want people to help the nation go. Do you agree with me? And it's you. You'll be shocked. I wish I could open your eyes so you could see. Give yourselves five years. Some of you, the positions you're going to find yourselves in, you will, especially the ladies, you will grow so fast. Very soon, some of you will walk on the runway, modeling. The money you would make, the influence you would have. Next question. Come, please. The last one is going to go to a lady. Put your hands together for me. Last one is going to be for a lady. My name is My question is, why is it that Africa will not be because I can remember one said that when an African man is wedded, his brother is in trouble. And the second question is, I can remember a said, I was not an African because I was born in Africa. Because Africa was born in me. Please, I want to know the name of that statement. Did you ask again? Ah! And I like his walking too. Ah. <laughs> The ladies like it when he walks like that. How many ladies like it when he walks like that? Oh, don't be shy. <laughs> okay, so brother here has asked a very important question. I'm going to try and answer it in two minutes so we don't go too far. He said, why is it that African slogans, and I will add proverbs, some of them kill us. In some of the schools, I talked about this, but here I did it. I went to school in Kumasi, and you hear them say, say, oh, Konya main chain, now we share Brunia, some chico, and we share Those of you who don't speak tree like me, you say, when you are going to visit God, in other words, if you are going to pray, and on the way you meet a white man, please go back. You have seen God. That is why when you go to your churches, some of you, you see the picture of Jesus Christ painted as a white man with blue eyes and long silky hair. Because when the missionaries came here, those of you who know Pastor Mensa Otterbe, yeah. when you find his book, Beyond the Rivers of Ethiopia, try and read it. When the missionaries came here with Christianity, that was what they told us. They told us that they were like God and that they were so clean. That's why a lot of the Akan people say, where do you have Brunifita? Brunifita, I mean, this is a clean white man. O Brunidia on Chantro. Brunidia on Nepal. Na bibini black man. He's right. A lot of dirty. And one of. How many of you say. Fanti. Fanti for him. No Fantis. Okay. The Fantis have a saying. They say, Abaye Juma, Wamswan Ocho. 
aban aban ejuma won soa otwe if you say it in chi aban aban ejuma yan soa ya twi you know what that means it means when we are working for the government this is important a lot of you are going to work with the government that the government work is not for you to carry on your head drag it on the floor you know what that means some of you you work in government offices and your friends will be teasing you you are working as if it's your father's work is this one to your father's work you take it like walker hey. it's your father's work do it well you see the mentality why they do one like if your father ain't work why if your father ain't work be that you go into a hotel room you leave it messy you dirty up the campus and outside because zoom lion has been paid to come and clean it look at the mentality yet school children in america and england four years five years when they even drop candy wrapper they pick it and put it into their pockets to go and look for a dustbin and drop by you you sit in throw throw you are throwing things away it's not too late to change so my brother unkrumah said he was not an african because he was born in africa he was an african because africa was born in him it meant that before he came out of his mother's stomach he was already an african so even if he was born in space or on a ship he would still be an african that is the same slogan i want all of you to put proudly out those who are bleaching stop when we meet again i'll talk about bleaching today i won't talk about it even buko banku has stopped bleaching don't bleach in my hair days, if I liked a girl and I realized that she had bleached or started to bleach, I walked out hey, quietly. It means you have a problem. You have an inferiority complex. You are looking down on yourself. Last question and we are done.
Ghana is my land, I cannot deny it. No matter where I go, I go my go my yard. We call it friction we kill. Thank you, 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 thank you. Let me hear you say, more fire. More fire. Fire. Okay. So because we are all tired and some of us are fasting, I'm going to spend only 30 minutes and I'm out of here. I appreciate the fact that you all decided to come out. I appreciate the fact that some of you could have been sleeping or reading. Therefore, I'm not going to waste your time at all. We're going to have a very beautiful conversation. I brought some gifts. I'm going to give you some gifts as well before we leave here. This is Ndeura Jakpa. And we chose Ndeura Jakpa because of the name Ndeura Jakpa. A very, very powerful warrior. And if you listen to a lot of my songs, you will hear Indeura Jakpa in there. I have a brand new song called My Dear Ghana. And in it, I mentioned Indeura Jakpa. So your school is a very important school. You have to work so hard to be able to get the permission to be able to come and I'm glad. Thanks so much to the headmaster, Alaji Ibrahim. So glad that we finally are here. Now the new song is called My Dear Ghana. Yay. And it says, This is my concourse, now called Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. To Africa, to the world. My dear Ghana, this so is Ghana. Set them free, free from the cold. Ghana, oh Ghana, come to my Ghana. Ghana, oh Ghana, Pasta Ghana. Ghana, oh Ghana, we are sisters Ghana. Ghana, oh Ghana, ancient kingdom of Ghana. Hallelujah. Hey, oh, mama, mama, come to Tabo, come to Tabo, para Kudama. about patriotism is going to be very short. What does it mean to be patriotic? It just means you have to love your country. It is time for all of us to give our strength to Ghana. It is all about Ghana. Now the Americans love America. The British love Britain. When they see the flag of America flying, you see the Americans standing, shaking as if they have poke poke bleak bleak. The British, when they see their flag, they salute their flag. When the Arabs are fighting with the Americans or the British, the first thing the Arabs do is to bend the flag of America or the flag of England. And when the English people and the Americans see it, they are angry. Yes, our country, they are burning our country. But with us, you can bend one million Ghana flags, we don't care. 
if Saudi Arabia was fighting with Ghana and Saudi Arabia decided to burn Ghana flag, would you care? No. You go to your dining hall and eat your food and go and sleep. We have to be trained in such a way that when we see the flag of Ghana, we see us and we see Ghana. It's a very powerful flag. It is not a toy. The red there stands for the blood. Your great grandfathers like Ndeura Japa, Kwame Nkrumah, Ya Asantua, fought for us. The blood. You were not there to see the blood. You all know how Ndeura Japa died. He died in war. You all know how Kwame Nkrumah died. It's the blood that the yellow stands for what God has given to us in terms of the minerals. The green stands for our green vegetation. And the black star stands for me and you. So those of you who are bleaching, especially the ladies. Star. The black star is very powerful. Don't you ever bleach. Bleaching is not good. Why do you want to bleach? You want to be like the white person. Meanwhile, the white person is also busily running here to sit under the sun so that they will be dark. Please, let us love our country, Ghana. It's not everything in the country that is perfect. There is poverty. There is also corruption. Some of you did not even pass your JHS properly. But you got very good schools to attend. And those who pass properly, some of them could even get those schools. It's corruption. Some of you are going to pass very well. But to enter the university, you'll be shocked that those who didn't pass, they are those who are going to be going there first. It's all because of corruption. If we all come together to fight against corruption, if that man there, if that lady there, if that person there, we all come together and say, hey, we hear there's some examination leakage. We are not going for it. Even if it's a teacher who comes, oh, leaked questions. Refuse it. You know why? Because it's the beginning of corruption. Some of you here may not be very brilliant. Some of you here might be so sharp and brilliant. You'll be shocked that in life, those of you who were not brilliant, you'll become the bosses of those who were brilliant. So school is not everything. School is very good. I went to school. I was very brilliant when I was in school. I passed all my papers all the way through university over and over. But some of the people I taught in class, some of my students, today they are making more money than me. There are some who have reached, reached a certain status. I see them and I'm proud because they passed through me. That is what I want you to be. Every good father wants his son to be better than him. True? It's a bad father who would say, Ah, my son, grow and be good, but I will always be better than you. The prayer is, May our children be better than us. Please, hold on strongly to the flag of Ghana. Respect the flag of Ghana. I'm going to end with a short story. In America, the America that a lot of you want to go to, look, there was a time in America where black people were not allowed to vote. Do you know what that meant? They didn't see black people as human beings. The way when you are voting and a goat comes, and say, chow, 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 chow. it's the same way the American people refuse black people voting. Are you human beings? In America, pets, you know pets? Goats and sheep and cats and parrots were better than black people. Oh yes, this is history. Ask your history teacher. Hey, in America, there was a time in a bus, public bus, white people were sitting in front and black people sat at the back. You know why? So that if there was an accident, 
white people will quickly run out of the bus before the bus started burning. And black people at the back. You know when you're at the back and the door is in front, white people will quickly leave. Go, 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 quick, 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 quick. Before is the turn for black people to come out, the bus would have been totally bent. Do we understand? Are we here? Please. It took one woman like you, like you. She was called Rosa Parks. One day, she went onto the bus. She entered, and then she saw that all the back for black people were filled up. So she went to sit at where white people would sit. And in those days, if the black side was even filled, and black people still came on the bus, they would have to stand up. Even if the white seats were empty. So Rosa Parks decided to go and sit on the white people's seat. And the white man came in, said, please, madam, that's my seat. She said, which seat? Is your name written on the seat? Wow. He said, please, you got to get up. That's my seat. He said, it, it's what? No. And she crossed her leg wow. and put a piece of chocolate in her mouth. She was a slim woman. Like, which one of you is slim? Like that. Rosa Parks. The bus driver stopped the bus. Came and held Rosa Parks because she was slim and threw her out of the bus. She came back onto the bus, sat in it again, crossed her leg and threw another chocolate into her mouth. When the matter came out, listen, all black people in the area, the area was called Montgomery in America. Montgomery. They all refused to board American buses. They were paying to board, right? Now we won't board. We will walk to work. Some of us will ride bicycles. We won't board your trucks anymore. You know what happened? They were no longer making money. And then they started begging black people to come back and sit on the bus. And black people said, if we will sit in the bus, then we must not sit at the back. Now we want to sit like human beings and be together with the rest of the people. That was when they banned white people sitting in front and black people sitting at the back. I'm asking you for that demonstration, all of you. Hey, if a teacher comes to your class and just enters and says, hey, you, look at her ugly face. Get out, get, get out of my class. <laughs> look at the way she's walking. Get out, get out. Say, so say, get out. And then she quickly walks out. And you, the rest of you, <laughs> you are laughing. You are fools. Because it is happening to somebody and not you, you're happy. The day it will happen to you, other people will laugh at you. If it happens to one person, it happens to all of you. If you are united like that, everybody will fear you. If anything is going to happen to Ndewuranja, SHS, they will say, hey, as for these people, they are so united. If you touch one man, you touch everybody. Sure. Even teachers. If they are going to do anything to any one of you, they will realize that you all are going to boycott. That is the only way we can rise. Please, I will end on this note. Love each other. Don't say this one is too tall. Or that one is too short. This one is too dark. This one is not brilliant. This one is that. Some of you, your fathers will say, when you go to school, walk with only the brilliant ones. No. Be free with everybody. You don't know what the future holds. Some of you will be ministers of state. And when some of the brilliant guys come to your office, you will remember when you were at Ndewura Yakwa. This was the guy who didn't respect me. Because he was first in class, he would just do anything. Some of you are going to help each other in future, depending on how you treat each other here. 
You can quarrel. You can misunderstand each other. Disagree. But never ever make enemies of each other. Have I made myself clear? I am begging you. Please build a better Ghana. You'll be shocked. Tomorrow you'll be the minister of women and gender and whatever. Tomorrow one of you here is going to be running for vice president. You think it's a joke? You will be shocked. Ha! Some of you are going to be prophets. Pastors. Some are going to be big malams who are going to be moving from one country to country preaching. Some of you are also going to be wives of presidents and heads of states. And some of you who are great businessmen, some of you who are great businessmen, you would have to pass through the wives of the presidents to reach to the president for big businesses to come to you. Don't underrate anybody. Respect everybody and make sure that everything is everything. At this juncture, fellow students, I promised that I was going to speak for 30 minutes. I want to believe that we have spoken enough. And I want to say thank you so much. I appreciate you. I am going to open the floor for five questions. And after that, I'll give you the gifts. And I'll go back to Accra. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let me hear you say, move on fire. Move on fire. Fire. Any questions? If you have a question, just put up. You have your hand up. Come, please. Put your hands together. Put your hands. Put your hands together, please. Are you the girl's prefect? Yeah. You are not. I like the way you walk. Oh my, don't be surprised that one day she will be modeling. And people will be clapping for her. She will be making money. And she will make Indewa Japa SHS very proud. She's asking me how I was able to reach where I am. To be honest with you, I come from a family that is not poor. But at a point, I decided that I had enjoyed too much luxury. So I wanted to face life. So I decided to grow my hair. And I decided to sing. But my father was worried. He said, are you sure? Are you going to leave the school? I said, me? I'll never leave school. I did my school to the highest level that you can think of. I don't normally tell people what degrees I have and what degrees I don't have. First and foremost, I am a human being. Right? So, with my music, what makes me happy is coming to talk to some of you like this. One day, we might meet on a plane and one of the ladies will walk up to me and say, hey, you came to our school four years ago. And you talk to us about this. Today, you know, I am the wife of the Saudi prince. I'm flying to Saudi Arabia. Wow. And uh, what are you into? I said, well, I'm not. I'm still going around talking to people. Can you come and talk to some Riyadh people in Saudi Arabia? Can you imagine that? Through one, another can meet another. So for me, if you ask me, I will tell you that I am very hardworking and at the same time, I have a strong passion. If I believe in something, I will pray. I love prayer. I love God. Oh my God. I love God. I pray and then I also work very hard with passion. Now when you work like that, nobody can defeat you. I come from the north. Just like you. I live in Accra. It's not easy to go to the capital. 
there are a lot of people who have gone to, excuse my language, big, big schools. They were taught by great teachers. But you have to rub shoulders with them. How do you do it? After you are taught, pick up a book, read. When I was growing up, I read everything in print, including what they wrote on people's shirts. I said, oh, fly Emirates. You turn your back. Whatever they wrote, I'll read it. When I was growing up, houses in Moshizongo, Tamale, they used to call me to come and write letters for old ladies. The old lady would say, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mama says that. No, you are power kumna. She has stayed there. She has stayed there for so long. You should come back. And my name rose in the whole area as somebody who could write. Write, you know. Today, all of you can write, can't you? But in my days, it was a big thing. Work hard, pray hard, and make sure that you don't let anybody discourage you.